Chapter 19 Verstolen watched as Schwarzelm broke into a furious, heavy charge. Kraus was at his side, as were an entire company of swordsmen in the colors of Talabheim. Behind the sorcerer, a unit of dog soldiers was forming up. The opening cleared by Grosslick's magic began to close back in on itself. Verstolen, his vision still cloudy, the Cygnus eating at his heart, could only watch as the Emperor's champion swept across the broken earth, his battle-ravaged features blazing with fury. As Schwarzelm tore towards Grosslick, Verstolen saw the same dark expression on his face as when Grunwald had died. Though his grim demeanor didn't always make it obvious, Schwarzelm cared about his men like few Imperial commanders. When one of them died, he felt it. Grosslick took a step back. His hands kindled lilac energy, snapping and snaking around his gauntlets. Tendrils of oily matter sprung out along the sword blade, catching on the viscous fluid still dripping from the metal. As Schwarzelm closed him down, Grosslick fired a spitting column of it outwards. The pure stuff of chaos surged across the narrow gap between the two men. Schwarzelm didn't so much as pause. Still charging, he swept the Sword of Justice into the path of the corrupted essence. The matter exploded. Shards of it spun into the bodies around, burning through armor and cracking metal. Both men and dog soldiers shrank back from the swarm of glowing embers. In the center of it, vast and inexorable, Schwarzelm plowed onwards, shrugging slivers of sorcerous discharge from his rune-warded pauldrons. Grosslick tried to blast at him again, but by then Schwarzelm was close. The Rechtal came across in a sweep of such staggering force that Verstolen thought it would cleave the man in two. Somehow, Grosslick got his own twisted blade in the path of it. He was slammed back heavily, his legs bending under the impact. A filigree of cracks ran across his crimson armor. Faithless, growled Schwarzhelm, swinging the blade back for another strike. You're the one to talk, gasped Grosslick, giving ground and frantically blocking the rain of blows that followed. His face was twisted into a mask of loathing, for Schwarzelm, but also for himself. The handsome features that had once awed Averheim were gone forever, scarred by the mutating whim of his new master. You made me! I'd have killed you for Grunwald's death alone, Schwarzelm growled, his blade working faster and heavier with each plunge, knocking Grosslick back steadily, stride by stride. You need not give me any more reasons. Verstolen found himself held wrapped by the exchange, unable to intervene, clamped down by the poisons coursing through his body. Schwarzelm fought like a warrior god of old, shrugging off Grosslick's attempts to land a blow and raining strikes of crushing weight on the sorcerer's retreating frame. The traitor's armor, invulnerable to the bite of lesser weapons, began to fracture under the assault. Even Bloch, for all his skill, hadn't as much as dented it. Oh, Bloch. Verstolen spun around. Where was he? The rush of bodies began to obscure the open space Grosslick had opened up. Dog soldiers and swordsmen surged across it, a mass of sweat-draped limbs and blood-streaked faces. Verstolen staggered along, pushing his way through a press of straining swordsmen. He was unarmed and vulnerable, but he didn't care. The battle roared on around him. The sounds of it were muffled, the stench of it muted. As if drunk, Verstolen clumsily shoved and ducked his way to the place where Block had fallen. Merciful Verena, he whispered, the words slurring from his sluggish mouth. As you have ever guided me. He didn't finish the prayer, though. A line of Empire swordsmen swept up in front of him, driving a detachment of dog soldiers back several paces. In their wake, a gap opened up. And there, lying on the churned earth, lay the halberdier commander, forgotten by the fury that boiled around him. His blood had stopped flowing, and his face was as pale as ivory. Somehow he regained hold of the halberd, and it lay across him like a monument of honor. Verstolen limped over to him, falling to his knees by Bloch's corpse. The commander had fallen awkwardly, 
his legs twisted and broken under him. His face was fixed in a snarl of aggression, belligerent to the very end. The virulence was now deep in Verstolen's bones. Without treatment, he knew he would be dead soon. And then the two of them, scholar and soldier, would find their end together, as unlikely a pairing as the minstrel and the slayer. He looked up. The swordsman had maintained their assault, but the right flank was exposed. More dog soldiers crept forwards. There was nothing between Verstolen and them. They advanced steadily, eyeing the vulnerable figure crouching down next to the body of their master's victim. For one moment, he thought the end had come. He was weak, far too weak. No, he breathed, gritting his teeth and getting to his feet with effort. You shall not despoil this. He picked up Bloch's halberd. It was heavy, far heavier than he imagined it would be. For the first time, he began to understand the scorn of fighting men for those they protected. The dog soldiers kept coming. Verstolen could see the unnatural light within the helmet of the lead warrior. The stench was just as it had been in Hessler's townhouse so long ago, the first time he saw one of the creatures up close. Damn you, he snarled, standing over Block's body and lowering the halberd blade awkwardly. This is not for you. If they understood the words, the dark soldiers gave no sign. They came on remorselessly. Empire troops, seeing the gap in the line, came up to Verstolen's side. He was not alone any longer. Without speaking, needing no orders, they closed in around the body of the fallen commander. All of them knew the score. This was ground that would not be yielded. As the first of the dark soldiers came into range, Verstolen narrowed his eyes, swallowed the bile rising in his gorge, adjusted a grip on the wooden stave, and braced to meet the charge. Helborg swept up the Klinger Rock, aiming at the screeching face of the nearest demon. It swooped past him, swerving away from the steel and spinning back into the air. They would not take on the Holy Blade. He swept round, looking to catch another of them with its edge. They were too fast, though. Like hawks above the prey, they darted into the crowd of men, picking off the weak and hauling them into the fire-laced sky. Their victims screamed with horror as they were borne aloft. Warrior priest or knight, it made no difference. These were foes beyond them. Volkmar kindled the staff again, and lightning spat along its height. He whirled round, releasing a volley of twisting bolts. They streaked up at the circling demons. One of them hit, dousing the creature in a ball of swirling immolation. It screamed in its turn, an echoing mockery of the cries of mortal men. Its companions merely laughed, and the sound was alive with joyous spite. The men cannot fight these, muttered the theogonist. The fire sustains them. We can't go back said Helborg, watching as the demons clustered for another pass. Can you do nothing? Hurt them, yes. Kill them, no. The demons swooped back between the houses, their claws now dripping with blood. As they came, the wind howled around them. Helborg watched them come again, keeping the sword poised to strike. One of them dropped down low, spinning as it dived towards the earth its face lit with a malign grin of exuberance. It went for the rice guard on the left flank, ignoring the bearer of the rune fang. The man stood his ground, his trembling hands holding his broadsword in place to ward off the impact. Fast as a stab, the demon took him. Helborg sprang. Leaping up at the sinuous figure, he whirled the Klingarak down across his kicking legs. The sacred blades sank deep into the demon flesh, sinking deep and severing etheric sinews. The demon wailed, dropping its quarry and twisting away from Helborg. The marshal pursued it, spinning the sword into a two-handed grip and preparing to plunge. The creature spat at him and disappeared. It re-emerged twelve feet away, cradling its wounds and wailing in agony before kicking back into the air. It soared upwards, leaving a trail of purple blood in its wake. In the meantime, more men had been plucked from the midst of the dwindling band, and carried up into the high places to be dismembered. 
a steady shower of blood and body parts rained down on the survivors, evidence of their comrades' fate. No more of this, snarled Helborg, turning to Scar. The preceptor was actually looking scared. He never looked scared. What then? We run. Where to? Helborg gestured to the tower, still distant over the roofs of the houses. Lightning flickered across the devastated cityscape, picking out the ruined frames of the buildings, now squatted on by demons licking their blood-soaked fingers. There! Without waiting for a response, Helborg broke into a sprint. Needing no orders, his men did likewise. Lydorf and Scar went alongside him. The preceptor loped like a wolf, though no longer grinning. Volkmar took up the rear, keeping the staff kindled and doing what he could to ward off the attacks from above. The Ravage Company ran through the streets, assailed at every step. The demons were in their element, sustained and buoyed by the blood fire, impervious to mortal weaponry. The warrior priest had the most success at fending them away, swinging their icon-studded hammers and slamming the unwary creatures against the charred walls. The big man and the standard still roared out his hymns and hefted a mighty weapon. Bloodbringer, he called it. It was a good name. Despite the fragmentary successes, the sprint was a nightmare. Knights and halberdiers, both with little defense against the monsters of the ether, were plucked from the midst of them almost at will, destined for an agonizing death in the spires of the city. With each corner the company rounded, another dozen were taken, whittling them down further. Helborg was torn between anger and horror. There was nothing worse than an enemy that could not be fought. He did his best to interpose himself between the demons and the men, but they slipped past his guard easily. He was forced to listen as dying men's screams rang out across the rooftops, accompanied by the echoing laughter of the killers. We're all gonna be dead before we get there, panted Lydorf, his cheeks red with the effort of running. He did manage to cast off some of his armor, but he was making heavy work of the chase. Then you can go back, spat Helborg, unwilling to indulge the man's fear. I will find the one who did this. A phalanx of demons screamed low across the heads of the fleeing band, pursued by Volkmar's inaccurate casting. Three of them had straggling bodies locked in their talons, all enclosed in plate armor. They were picking off the Reichsguard now. You think you can kill her when you can't kill these? Helborg ramped up the pace, driving the men even harder. The Runefang will finish her he growled, his breath even more ragged. His shoulder wound had opened again, and he could feel the hot stickiness under his armor. The tower was still far away. You can count on it. As he spoke, a demon tore into them from the roofs on their left, diving down into the press of bodies and scattering them. It had actually miscalculated, coming in too quickly. It rolled across the cobbles with its prey, unable to leap back into the blood fire quick enough. Scar, further back among the men, was on her in an instant, hacking at her with his blade to free its prey. Scar, no! roared Helborg, shoving his way through the jostling bodies to reach him. The blade of the preceptor passed harmlessly through the demon's flesh, biting into the stone beneath and kicking up sparks. The demon hissed at him, dropped her intended quarry, and coiled to leap. Get back! roared Helborg, almost there, clinging a rock in hand. And then the demon sprang, catching Scar full in the chest and hurling them both free of the men around. They crashed into the nearest wall, shattering the stone. Helborg saw Scar's helmet bounce jarringly from the impact, and the knight's limbs go limp. Helborg burst free and leapt after them. The demon crouched again, ready to tear up into the skies with her latest morsel. The Klingerak was quicker, tearing deep into the lilac flesh, runes blazing as it bit. The creature screamed, arching back, limbs flailing, trying to turn around. Scar fell from the grasp, sliding down the stone and leaving a slick of blood on the wall. Helborg withdrew the blade and the demon spun to face him. 
The Klinger rock flashed again, carving through the demon's neck and severing the head. A mighty snap rippled through the air, radiating out and knocking the airborne demons back up into their heights. For one moment, the severed head of their fallen sister still breathed. It looked up at Helborg with a mix of fear and amazement, before finally rolling up listlessly, lifeless and empty. Lydorf rushed to Helborg's side, his own blade drawn, too late to intervene. The surviving troops gazed at the marshal in awe. Nothing is immune to the Sword of Vengeance, panted Helborg, gazing at Scar's unmoving body. His voice was shaking with emotion. You ask me how I'll kill her? This is how. And then he turned on his heel and motioned for the race to the tower to resume. Far above, the demons began to circle again, gauging the moment to strike, wary of the blade with the power to extinguish them. Along the twisted streets, the stone blackened with ashes, Helborg's men sprinted into the heart of the city, half their number gone, the tower still distant, and the scions of the Lord of Pain on their backs. Volkmar ran, his robes curled tight around his huge frame as he went, slowing him down. His bald head was glossy with sweat, both from the exertion and from the pressing heat. Every muscle in his body screamed at him to stop, to hold his ground, to face the creatures that swooped on them. Maybe, if he did, he could take a couple of them down, maybe half a dozen. He could flay their unsubstantial flesh from their unholy bodies, rip them into their constituent parts. But he knew that Helborg was right. They couldn't fight this enemy, not for any length of time. The blood fire was sustaining the demons, filled their unholy bodies with energy and power. This was their place, a city of mortal men no longer. The ragged band of soldiers, whittled down to little more than a hundred, kept going. Laggards were left behind, easy picking for the rapacious demons. Those that remained huddled close together, gaining what protection they could from Volkmar and Helborg. They finally passed over the river. The water boiled black, choked by ash from the fire. The Averberg, the ancient seat of the electors of Averheim, was an empty shell. Its stark, flame-blackened walls rose up into the raging maelstrom, broken silhouettes against the burning clouds of crimson. The demons came at them again and again, giving no kind of respite. With every pass, another man was taken, swept up into the spires for an agonizing end. As the cries rang out across the ruins, Volkmar felt hot tears of anger prick at his eyes. He wanted to stop, but he knew he couldn't. My lord, came Maldir's voice from his shoulder. The priest still rang powerfully alongside him, despite carrying the standard in one hand and the warhammer in the other. Though his beard was lank with sweat and his face as red as the fire around him, he was not giving up yet. That damned Ulrican intransigence. So you were right, snarled Volkmar, hardly breaking stride. Maldir shook his head. No, he said, the words coming in snatches between labored gasps. I was not. He looked up at the looming tower, now dominating the sky above them. Your zeal led us here. Though effort etched in every word, there was a kind of satisfaction in his voice. He looked back at Volkmar. I should have trusted you. Volkmar just kept going. There were no uncertainties anymore. For one moment, back then, he'd been close to losing his mind. Above them, the demons were gathering for a final pounce. There were dozens of them. The portals of the tower were visible, dark and gaping, but they'd be lucky to even make it near to them. Save your energy for the demons, rasped Volkmar, watching as the first of them plunged downwards. You are gonna need it. The demon hurtled towards Helborg, only turning out of the path of the Klingerak at the last moment. The marshal ignored it. Unless they made a mistake, they were too fast to engage with. The curtains of fire in the air buoyed them. This was their element. More screams from behind him told him they'd found another victim. He turned the final corner and ran down a long straight street. 
At the end of that, the rows of shattered houses finally gave out, revealing a pair of enormous iron-rimmed gates. Two pillars flanked them, crowned by fire. Beyond the gates, a wide and featureless courtyard opened up. The tower stood at the center. Up close, its scale was even more daunting. Volkmar, he shouted, keeping up the pace. The gates! The Theogonist responded instantly, summoning bolts of golden flame from his staff and hurling them at the iron. The gates shuddered at the first impact and broke on the second. The metal slammed back hard, bouncing from the stone pillars as the hinges strained. And then they were through, the ever-diminishing company tearing across the open courtyard, harried and pursued at every step. I can sense her, said Lightdorf. The man was suffering. His red face still carried too much fat, and the sweat was running in rivulets down his cheeks. Just as he predicted, though, the demons ignored him. The wolf's klinge had a heritage they feared. Or maybe it was something more. In that case, you will be our guide, said Helborg, gazing up at a column of ruin looming above them. The tower was massive, a soaring dark skeleton of iron over a throbbing core of magma red. Above the pinnacle, the ring of clouds was broken, exposing Morsleib again. The power that had drawn the storm in over Averheim was beginning to dissipate. Volkmar felt it as well. Is this weakness? he asked. Lydorf shook his head. No, he said. Its work is done. Helborg didn't ask how Lydorf knew that. He risked a look over his shoulder. A few dozen men were left, all haggard and panting from the sprint across the ruined city. None of the regular troops made it. The remainder were warrior priests and a few knights of the Reichsguard, the only ones with the stomach to endure the horrors of the air. The tower would be no kinder to them. Once we're in, which way? he asked Lightdorf, watching as the massive tower gates loomed up out of the fire-flecked dark. We need to go down, replied the elector tersely. She is beneath the earth. Volkmar shook his head. There is nothing human in there. Helborg said nothing, but forced the pace once again. The gates drew close. Pillars of adamant framed the huge curved doors, glinting in the firelight. Sigils of Slanesh adorned the iron, sunk deep into the metal in a sweeping pattern of silver. The vast bowl of the tower rose up into the night, soaring three hundred feet to the summit. The base of it was mighty, bound by pillars of obsidian and engraved bands of iron. The rumble of machines working in the deep crept across the stone, and blood fire rushed up the flanks of the enormous structure, washing over the colonnades and parapets as it raced to the apex. The demons came for them again, swooping down the sheer sides of the tower, arms outstretched and ready for more feeding. There were dozens and dozens of them now. They'd been waiting for this, their last chance to pick them off in the open. Get those doors open, snapped Helborg, but Volkmar was already working. The Theogonist swung his staff around and hurled a stream of leaping fire at the barred doors. They shivered, but stayed closed. And then the demons landed, crashing to the earth and sinking their talons deep into the unprotected mortals below. Sigmar! roared Helborg, tearing into them with the Sword of Vengeance. They darted away from the blade, cowed by the runic power of the steel. Averland! cried Lydorf, though his meager voice was carried away by the roar of the furnaces. He swiped wildly at the spinning creatures, and they evaded his blows easily. Volkmar unleashed another volley, and the gap between the doors fractured. The demons kept coming, sweeping more troops in their embrace and tearing them apart in mid-air. One of them came for the big warrior priest with the standard. He stood his ground and brought his heavy warhammer round with incredible speed. The faith-strengthened head of it slammed into the oncoming demon. Bright light blazed from the impact, knocking the creature backwards. It hovered a moment, dazed. 
and then the priest roared his defiance, keeping the standard aloft, whirling the warhammer over his head in triumph. Smite the mutant, he bellowed. Purge the... A claw punched through his back and out through his chest. He coughed up blood in gouts as he was lifted from the ground. More demons flocked to him, snapping at his flailing limbs and biting deep into the flesh. Too quick for Helborg to reach him, they dragged the heavy figure into the air. Fight the darkness, Maldir roared through his blood-clogged throat, still crying aloud as half a dozen demons struggled to bear him aloft. He dropped the standard, but kept swinging the warhammer, slamming more and more of them aside, even as he was taken outside the reach of help. Dawn will come again. Trust in your faith. And then he was gone, holed up to the flanks of the tower, his increasingly weak cries of denunciation and defiance echoing down from above before they were silenced forever. Volkmar summoned fire a third time, and the gates blew inwards, crashing back on their enormous hinges. A sickly jasmine stench rolled out to greet them. Beyond the portal, a corridor stretched away, dark and forbidding. Inside, cried Helborg, pushing the men across the threshold, doing what he could to protect them from swooping demons at their backs. They hurried in, those that were left anyway. Lydorf was at the rear, followed last of all by Volkmar. As the Theogonist passed under the dark lintel, he turned and smashed his staff at the ground. A ball of force raced outwards, a shimmer in the air like the backwash from a massive explosion. The demons were hurled away, wheeling into the high airs and screaming with frustration. Close the gates, Helborg shouted, seizing a door and pushing against it. There were fewer than twenty of them left. The priests and Volkmar took one door, and the Reichsguard and Leidorf joined Helborg on the other. Slowly, agonizingly slowly, the gates began to grind shut. Outside, quickly recovered from Volkmar's casting, the demons rushed back, screaming for more blood. Helborg saw the foremost tearing towards him, her eyes alive with bloodlust. Harder! Harder! He roared, straining every muscle. The gap closed too slowly. The demons hurtled towards it, reaching for the diminishing space. If they got in, then they were all dead men. Finally, groaning and creaking, the mighty iron doors slammed into place. There were heavy thuds from the outside as the demons crashed into them, followed by howls of petulant anguish. The iron doors buckled, but they didn't break. There are wards here panted Volkmar, leaning on his knees. That will not hold them, said Lydorf, drawing huge, shuddering breaths. All around, the surviving troops slumped to the polished marble. Helborg felt impatience prick at him. They needed to get moving. How long have we got? Lydorf shrugged, his shoulders shivering with fatigue. They know this place better than we do he said without conviction. Not very long. Helborg looked over his shoulder. The corridor yawned away into the dark, lit only by faint blushes of lilac. The walls were dark and smooth, polished to a high sheen. The muted thunder of the blood fire still thrummed through the walls. The interior of the tower was filled with strange echoing sounds. The immense superstructure of the iron was creaking. From far below, unearthly noises rose up, warped and distorted by their passage through the catacombs. The stain of corruption was everywhere, thick and cloying. At the far end of the corridor, there was a huge spiral stairway leading both up and down. Flickering light, bright and unnaturally blue, came from below. Time to move again, Helborg said. His voice was harsh, his expression unforgiving. And I do hate keeping a lady waiting.